Let's go! Dunk tip Tuesday, the three biggest mistakes I see people make when they're trying to jump higher and they're trying to dunk, so let's go! Welcome back to Dunk Tip Tuesday, baby. Every freaking Tuesday, a new Dunk Tip for you. I go over the common questions, so leave a comment. Last week, kind of all over the place. You guys were nuts. So, thing is, I figured I would make a, a, the biggest mistakes that I see. It does answer a lot of those questions that I got from comments, from Instagram, from my podcast, all these different places. But I wanted to just get this out there because I really feel like if you guys avoid these mistakes, you will be on the right track. Things I wish I knew when I started my journey. And they're just huge factors that aren't even necessarily exercises. So let's just get started. Number one is technique. And what I mean by that is hammering home the correct technique. And by the way, we don't waste any time. We get into it. We don't do anything besides grow. We just give the energy. We grow. We get to work. And that's a huge part of it right away is get the freaking work, dude. Stop waiting for this exercise, this that, that, that program, that shortcut. No such thing. Okay, I'm giving you the shortcuts. This is avoiding mistakes. That's the shortcut. You do it right the first time. That's technique. You carve the right technique. Do two foot, one foot. Do both plants. Do all angles. And what I mean by this is you're going to learn patterns. Anything you practice, you repeat, it's going to cause patterns in your brain. It's going to be great for you. But you want to make sure you're doing it correctly. And if you start with just one step, even just a standstill jump, then work up to one step, then two step, then your full approach. And you do that from all angles. You do that with right, left, and left, right. And I get that question a lot. How do I know which plants? Might be another video. Let me know if you want to see that. But if you do that, you do one foot, you have your chest up, your chin up, the technique. I have a lot of technique videos you can check out. But if you do that from the start and take time, take weeks at a time to really hammer home, if you're having trouble with that footwork hammer home that footwork so you could really carve those patterns because if you do take the time and you're diligent and you're patient then over a few months it's effortless now you can build on that but if you build bad technique like I have and then you're gonna carve the wrong patterns and not only are you gonna not jump your best but you're gonna have to unlearn those and that's really hard to do you have to take time away for example I only have like one pattern with my right left it's really hard for me to come from other angles because I'm just not I'm not good at it and I wish I would have just practiced and I'm back I'm back to doing that now I'm back to practicing the different angles and one step at a time and my left right but if I would have done it from the start I would have had a greater foundation and that's what I want for you so practice your technique all right so number two that is tracking, tracking everything, all aspects of your life, mind, body, and spirit, meaning where are you at? What's your energy? But what I mean by tracking as well is the tangible things, your data. How many jumps are you jumping in one session? Right, left, left, right. Calculate that. Take note of that. If the more data you have, the better you can understand your body and the better you can train. Because say you jump 70 times. I've had dunk sessions where I jump 70 times and I feel great right? The next day because I worked up to that, right? But then the next time I'm like, okay, I want to get to 80, something crazy because I eventually you want jump endurance. You want to be able to have a lot of max jumps. But if you're not tracking how many jumps, you don't know. Another good example is sometimes I'm warmed up and I warm up super quick in three, four jumps and I'm flying my highs and I'm measuring how high I'm jumping. But other times it took me 20 jumps to get my max, right? But if I have this data, if I was tracking it, I would know early on in the session, okay, I'm still not jumping great, but I remember that one session I had 20 jumps before I felt like I was jumping at my peak. So that's data that's building your awareness of your training. Even more on that, you jumped 10 times right, left, 10 times left, right, 10 times off one foot, right? Now you know, okay, that, and you have no pain the next day, you feel good, you're like, okay, my body can handle that. Because if you don't track that, how are you gonna make progress? That's the simple quote for this whole section of the video is, if you're not tracking, how do you make progress? And then every time you're trying to increase your vert, you should be measuring. Whether it's just your hand on the rim, your hand on the backboard, your wrist on the rim, you should try to have a max jump. Because how do you know if you're jumping higher if you have no goal? You have to have a goal to track. And when it comes to energy, this could be a whole video, but track your sleep, track your nutrition, track your body awareness, which was the, the training part of it, how much you're moving your body, how much energy you're using in your body. And with sleep, that's easy. I use the Whoop band, which you can get a, a free... 
free free month with the whoop i'm a huge proponent of this thing it's really good to hold you accountable sleep is the number one habit i have videos on that we'll get into that another time nutrition you don't need to track your calories i used to do that it's definitely helpful but what i'm saying is just make take note of it start to build awareness did you eat like crap yesterday or did you eat great do you feel great today does your stomach feel weird does your energy feel off how does it feel if it feels good Nutrition's a big part of that. That's your fuel. That's your recovery. That's how you're going to have fuel and energy in your body to perform and recover. And lastly, probably the most important is your mindset. Because if you're doing these two things, you're tracking, you're working on your technique, you're carving good patterns, you're training correctly, you need to have the mindset that most days are going to be low days and also that it's a long process. People are going to have gains in the beginning. Everybody has beginner gains. Everybody's going to be different. But if you really want to jump your highest, you really want to achieve your dreams, you really want to get to that crazy level, you have to be patient because you have to give your body time to adapt. And it's not going to be a straight line up. You're just It's just impossible. There's not a single dunker that just goes up. Yes, people have more progress than others, but even them, they've had a low-ass day. And I bet you if you ask them, that was hard on them. And I bet you if you think about that, that's a mindset they feel like they want to change everything i know if i've had it every dunker i've talked to we've had low days be like what's wrong with my training what's wrong with this and that's why i go back to the data because if you go back to the data it's like look i slept well i ate well my training was on point i just had an off day sometimes your battery pack your central nervous system's a little off you didn't get the best sleep you possibly could or something you're stressed out from school or work and that just affected your jumping there's so many factors and that's why you need to be tracking but overall you need this mindset to never give up because that is the key to any goal you want to achieve it's going to have down times and if you you have the tracking to, to fall back on. You have your technique that you're carving the right things. You're doing everything you can to a to the highest degree of perfection that you can. It's going to be easier to get through those low days. That's the point of the first two, and the mindset is the number one. So wake up every day with a progress mindset, trying to make progress, not trying to get to the top today. It's what can I do today that'll be the best for my future. That's how I want you to think. That's what's helped me in my life completely. And I wish I knew that from the beginning because I was chasing every fraction of an inch. I was chasing inches by just throwing lobs, going for that, just trying to get this dunk, trying to get that instead of building the foundation, being patient, making these patterns so carved in every direction that I could be the best dunker I could possibly be, which is my goal. So I got away from my own goal because I wasn't patient. I didn't have this mindset. So that's it. That's Dunk Tip Tuesday. Leave a comment with any questions you have from dunking, training, mindset, footwork, jumping, dunking, actual tricks, whatever the hell it is, dunking on people, how to get over the fact that you just murdered someone's career. All right. Happy Dunk Tip Tuesday. I'm excited to bring you these videos. It's been so much fun. Let me know what you want to see, and I'll see you next week. Toodles!